I know you practice all sorts of shots and really simulate uh, what you're going to see, but the shot late where you, you held your pivot foot for what seemed like forever, uh, tell me about that shot and, and just having to really work to get even something clean off there. Yeah, um, like, like you said, I work on situations. Um, believe it or not, I work on that shot. I work on like trying to create a shot with, with, with my dribble picked up um, just because you never know. Um, when you're going to need something. Um, and I try to be as well-rounded as a, a, a weapon as I can. Um, and I had the opportunity and the ability to, to kind of plug that in tonight. Um, but yeah, just another shot that I, I've worked on many times. Shay, obviously, back in Boston, you seemed eager to, to play again. Um, and then they sent you home. Can you just walk me through the timeline from you know when you came back here, just what these past few days have been like, and just how you felt out there today? Yeah, um, I came back um, just because with my contusion, um, all the flying and the changing altitudes wouldn't have been good for it. Um, and I was able to really like get treatment, um, work out, kind of get recovery with, with our facility and get all the perks of that um, for like three or four days. So it was really good for me. and. I think you guys could tell uh, my legs a little bit better than it was before. And at the buzzer, you you like turn to the crowd, like cups your ear, like you kind of egg them on, which you're, you're rarely ever that animated. I just wonder, like, what led to that point, and just what were you feeling in that moment? Yeah, um, just emotions. Um, felt good to be back. Um, haven't played in front of the home crowd in a minute. Um, we like had a road trip, and then I missed the two home games, and then went back on the road. Um, so missed the fans, um, and then yeah, I just felt good to be back. Shay, I, because of the high level of play you've had all year, I think the assumption maybe by some of us is you just step in and everything's good right away. Like, did it take you some time tonight to feel comfortable back in the flow of things uh, after the absence that you've had? Um, I, honestly, it didn't feel like it. I felt pretty good to start. Um, and I, in, in the past couple games, I tried to play through the injury, um, but it wasn't like it wasn't healing fast enough. So I figured I'd, I'd get get some break, get get some work, and um, not come back until I was 100. percent But I felt 100 percent tonight for sure. Can you talk a little bit about the opening of the second half? You hit a three first possession, then you get a jumper over uh, Murray a minute or two later, then an assist to Lou. Did you, did you have in your mind to just? look for some different ways to affect uh, on the offensive end? I know your defense is important to you, but offensively, were you sort of looking for ways to maybe find those spots and get yourself going in the second half? Yeah, I just wanted to be aggressive. Um, and I think it started defensively. Um, but yeah, I wanted to just come out of half aggressive overall. Um, we were down 19, and we kind of didn't have any time to waste. So I wanted to, to get right to it. Shay, when people talk about the postseason, sometimes they'll mention things of like that won't work in the playoffs or you can't get to that move in the playoffs, almost like it's sort of like a boogeyman. But like when you were in your first two years, what were some of the things that the vets told you just about preparing for the playoffs? Um, hmm. Hmm. Uh, they told me it's the same game, it's the same basketball. Um, not to overthink it. Um, now everything's heightened. The focus of your team, the other team, um, the focus on every possession. Each team equally wants it the same. Um, the game and, and and the hustle and the focus is a little bit heightened. Um, but at the end of the day, it's still basketball, and the same things work. Shake. Uh Going back to Gallo's question, you, you said you, you know, practice after you pick up your dribble, still trying to create space, get a shot off. Like, what does is that like a post practice drill? Is it off season work? And also, it, did did you pick that up from anybody? Um, I do it a lot in off season, um, and and then I'll like just like plug it in at random times throughout the season. Um, and then the guy I work with in the summer uh, is, is where I got it from. And then non-game related, um, with, with Cal leaving Kentucky, 
just curious your, your thoughts on that when you heard that and I, I know that he's obviously got a lot of guys like yourself in, in the league. Are you more like tied to Cal or tied to Kentucky? Like, how does that work when you've only when you are only there a year? Um, good question. Um, it, it took me for surprise for sure. Um, I didn't know. Um, now Cal put me in a position to live my dream out, um, recruiting me, um, trusting me on his team, on his basketball team, and kind of gave me the keys towards the end. So um, I'll forever be, uh, I guess, grateful and appreciative of Cal, no matter where he goes, and no matter what decision he does with his career. Um, I love that guy. Assuming it is Arkansas that he goes to, have you heard from any of your Arkansas teammates of, about it? <laughs> no, we haven't talked about it yet. Yeah. I'm sure I'll hear in the next couple of days. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, uh, you, you mentioned that you tried to play through injury. Just. How long was that a thing? Do you remember when, when that started? Um, since it happened in the Utah game, I got uh, hit in my, my quad a couple of times that game. Did you kind of have that since in the New York game? Or like what, what was that? Say again? The New York game. What, was that part of that? Did, did you feel 100% for the New York oh, game? Oh, I haven't felt 100% since from the Utah game till tonight. Yeah, Shay, what, what was the point in the game tonight when you knew you had it? I mean, it was a back-and-forth game tied with two and a half minutes to go. When did you, guys, when did you know, hey, it was a hard-fought one, we got this one? Yeah, um, honestly, I didn't, I didn't think that at all throughout the game. Um, I just tried to take it like possession and stay in the moment, um, not look ahead. Now I could feel the tie turning a little bit, um, the way we started the third. Um, and then they kind of put the zone on us. It stalled us a little bit, and they got back a lead, a, b a pretty big lead. Um, but I, w I wanted to just like focus on possession and keep chipping away at it. Um, so I never really thought that throughout the night. Myron, this comeback, maybe people would have thought man, this might have happened. Your first game back, Jalen's first game back, second quarter was rough. What is it that allows you guys to keep coming back from these double digit deficits to win games? Um, we've been in a situation a lot. Um, we know what it takes. I guess that, that muscle is kind of trained. And now nobody wants to go down that big. Um, but it's a luxury to have guys that, that understand how to get back um, and how to play through adversity. And I think we have a group of guys that does. You had a big scoring night, but uh, it seemed like your block at the end of the third quarter kind of got you hyped up. You kind of had a stride going to the bench. What did you like about that? Was it because it was on De'Aaron, your fellow Kentucky guy? What, what was that about? Um, just a stop to end the quarter. Um, crowd was going crazy. Good momentum. Nick Gallo, KC Thunder. Uh, Chad, I want to ask you about the, the second half defense and um, some of those crunch time moments where you guys really executed, came away with stops. Um, how did that feel out there? And, and how, you guys, how were you guys able to get to that level in the second half? Yeah, uh, I mean, it wasn't perfect the whole game. Uh, there were times in the second half where we gave up a lot of offensive rebounds, which they got some good looks from. We were fortunate enough that, um, you know, they didn't capitalize on those. But I feel like we disrupted their rhythm, rhythm enough that, um, you know, those weren't as easy looks as they were for them coming out the gates. Uh, and especially down the stretch, we really closed things off and uh, took, a, took away what they were trying to do and then took away the second option, too, and made things tough on them. Lou, I wanted to ask you, one of the biggest shots was that one by Shea where he kind of keeps his pivot foot for seemingly forever. You've seen his growth and development have to defend stuff like that. Uh, can you just speak to the degree of difficulty to, to hit those types of shots? Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it was crazy. I don't know. I don't know how can you guard that. And <coughs> I seen, I'm not surprised no more. And I seen Shea hit a couple shots like that. And so I, I don't, it don't really surprise me anymore, but you know, that's just the type of player he is. He's going to make some, some, some big time players and, and we need him to do that for us. Chet, Mark was just in here talking about, um, you know, crediting you for the Sabonis matchup, just how you played him tonight, said that you, in December, has sort of struggled with that matchup. I just wonder the lessons you've maybe learned since that, that December Coach. game that maybe helped you tonight. Um, just uh, experience and, uh, you know, preparation. Um, you know, not every game is going to be perfect, but, uh, you know, I try to put myself in the best position every game watching film, keying in on the game plan, uh, and kind of taking experience that I have from other past matchups and rolling them over. And uh, 
you know, it wasn't just me on them. Uh, you know, we did a good, great job as a team, um, you know, playing against their plan A guys. How different does that look? I mean, I know, like, Herder's, like, out for the season for them. They, they, I imagine, like, Malik Monk would be doing some movement shooting. Just how much does that matchup change when those type of guys that he usually play out the, the DHO off? Like, how much does that change? Um, I mean, obviously those are two really good players, and, and missing them changes the game a lot. Um, you know, when you don't have to jump out uh, and kind of give up that pocket pass with an advantage going downhill, you're able to stay in front of front of them way more. And, uh, you know, that's it's definitely easier to guard somebody when you're in front of them. So, um, you know, I'd say that's the difference. Yeah, and, and for you, like, we talked a bunch throughout the road trip about, you know, the advantages that you would need to create without Dub, without Shea. Um, obviously, Shea had a monster third quarter, balls in his hands a bunch at the end of the game. Just what was it like being reminded of the kind of grip he can have on the game, I guess? Uh, I mean, it's great. Um, you know, when him and, and Dub went down, we didn't reinvent everything we were doing. Uh, you know, it wasn't, um, you know, Chet ISO for 40 minutes, 48 minutes, whatever it is, uh, just because they were out. You know, we were still running our stuff. We got a lot of great players on this team. So um, it was really spread the wealth and, uh, you know, everybody step up, next next man up type of thing. And, and now that they're back, um, you know, everybody's still being ready, uh, you know, to make plays when they need to. Lou made big plays tonight, Dub, uh, and Shea came back, obviously made great plays. Um, and, you know, we just got to keep keep that going and, uh, you know, continue to find our rhythm again. You know, you know, Lou, you guys are down at 19. I know it's a long game, but how much does it help when you come out, first two possessions, you guys make threes, all of a sudden it's a 13 game, 40 seconds in, and all of a sudden it just not that big of a – Big of a hurdle. How much does that help just to have a quick start to a second half after the first half you had? Uh, it's good. I mean, we we all know it's a 48 minute game. You know, it's not. It's never going to be perfect. You know, we had a bad start. You know, we just had to stick to our game and and, and do what we do to come back in the game. And it was just good that uh, shit hit a big three and Chet hit a three after that to get us going. And then it was good. It was just a good momentum for for us to get going in the second half. How much uh, you guys? Rough second quarter at halftime. How much is it about adjustments or just you guys playing better? Uh, it's a little bit of both. Uh, I mean, there were some small adjustments that we could make, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, a lot of plays weren't going our way that were like 50-50 plays, uh, you know, just getting punked type of plays, so we had to turn that around. Anybody else? I, I do wonder because, like, to start that game, obviously Fox – he starts shooting shots he he wouldn't usually shoot. Same thing with with Keon Ellis. Just I imagine you're kind of numb to the whole game of runs thing by now. But like as they're kind of piling on shots that they wouldn't usually shoot. Like how much are you thinking about variance? Like is that in the back of your mind at all? Like that you know that that game's gonna you know shake back the other way. Um, I mean it's a little bit of both. Obviously you gotta course correct, but you can't overcorrect and start giving something else up that uh, you can't be giving up. Um, it's the NBA. Uh, dudes have big nights, and uh, you know if somebody starts out hot, you don't want to let them be hot for the whole game. So, uh, you know, we had to make adjustments and uh, you know be better in what we were doing to take the, those things away. But uh, you know, good players make good plays, and that's what they did at the beginning, and uh, we were able to change that down the stretch. Nick Gallo, KC Thunder. Uh, Mark, after the game, Shea said that the guys just did a better job of executing the game plan, really <coughs> focusing in on it in the second half. What what elements of the game plan did you feel like they were really better and more tapped into in that second half? Well, we talked pregame about, you know, needing to tap back into the defensive end of the floor. Um, I didn't think we did that in the first half. Some of that was shot making. I mean, Fox made a crazy layup. Ellis banked a three in. Ellis made six threes in the first half. So um, credit them. But... Uh, we just weren't as sharp, and then we came out of halftime with a great sense of purpose and really defended in the second half of that game, held them to 41 points. Obviously, there's shot making on on that side of it too, so it wasn't all of our defense. But I just thought our intensity uh, was excellent, especially down the stretch. And uh, you know, I thought that's what won us the game, you know, and allowed us to come back like that. You often talk about your players' like relationship to adversity. There were a string of possessions in that second half where Shea. Continue to get downhill, no call, no bucket. 
but he just he kept on going for, for the rest of the night. What do you see from him in terms of uh, his determination to, to keep on going? Yeah, whole team. You know, we just we have to understand the nature of an NBA game. You know, it's a 48 minute game. It's going to be a lot of swings, especially with the way that teams shoot the ball. You know, inclu- us included. Um, yeah, I think the average swing. You know, it's a 27 point swing tonight between their largest lead and our largest lead. Um, the average is around 22 to 24 if you look at you know NBA games. So I mean, it's kind of a normal night when the game swings like that, and we just have to have the emotional maturity to understand that hang in there during the lows and also stay you know locked in during the highs for for you specifically kind of on that same note i imagine you're you're numb to this sort of game of runs thing by now but but just the shots that the fox and ellis were hitting early on like as they're hitting some of the shots you mentioned like how just secure are you in your thinking like just knowing that you know there's some variance there like is, is that in the back of your mind at all yeah i mean there's there's no alternative, you know, like what else are you going to do other than tip your hat uh, and try to keep the team focused on what we can control. There was stuff that we could control in the first half. I think that's the point um, where, you know, we weren't as sharp and weren't as intense as we could have been. Uh, and in the second half, we were. Um, so they were a little less comfortable, I think, as a result of that. And, um, you know, credit our guys for amping that up. But you know, when guys are, it's the NBA, when guys are making tough shots, you know, there's really nothing else you can do. But we just need to stay focused on the things we can control. Yeah, and, and obviously it, it kind of returned back to, I guess, relative normalcy between, you know, Shea and, and Dub's sub pattern through the, the second half. But the first half, you kind of went away from what you usually do. It, it felt similar to that in the Orleans game. Can you just walk me through the thought process there? Yeah, I mean, just continuing to you know, expand our options, you know, as we come down the stretch of the season, as we go into the postseason. Um, we want to be a team that's unpredictable. Um, we want players that can adapt to any situation, any role that helps the team. Um, we haven't done that very much with his rotation, but uh, we see some benefits to having that tool in the, in the toolbox, and we don't want uh, to do it for the first time in a postseason game, you know, so... Uh, took a look at it in New Orleans. Obviously, he missed some time, but the plan was to take a look at it more uh, over this last stretch. Wanted to look at it again tonight. And then, you know, if you're them and you're trying to, you know, have a beat on his rotation, Dub's rotation, you go in at halftime and you don't know what we're going to do. And that's, you know, that's by design. Yeah, and, and Shea was part of that, that second quarter where you guys went like two for 14 or whatever it ended up being where the offense really couldn't find any cracks. But, you know, kind of as Nick mentioned, as the game went on, He's finding those cracks. He's almost forcing his way downhill. Just what did you see open up for him? And maybe by force in, in terms of, you know, the way he was playing. Yeah, I mean, I think some of them came in transition and came after stops. And, you know, that's, like I said, coming off the road, um, our defense. And we we were just in, you know, this is, you know, game 11 in like 19 or 20 days or something. And that's nine different cities, including Oklahoma City over that time. So, um there's a cumulative fatigue that comes with that part of the schedule. But uh, that being said, we just we're not defending up to the level that we have to, you know, to be a consistently good team. And um, I thought in the second half tonight we did. And I thought some of his stuff came, you know, on those plays where we turned them over. Or we got a rebound and, and push the ball. And now all of a sudden he's harder to load on. He's harder to square up and guard. Mark, I know obviously what Shea does, you know, sort of we've seen just the the dazzle that he can bring but to come out in the second half he hits a three then he gets a jumper over Murray then he gets an assist to Lou just for him to sort of find a rhythm did you sense him sort of searching for that did you guys try to find ways to get him those things just to get him going there in the second half well he's a great player they tend to they they tend to be hard to hold down for 48 minutes uh so that's some of it um and then it's it's how we play collectively i think benefits everybody and um we just in that for in the stretch joe i was talking about you know i just thought we were a little flat uh on both ends of the floor we weren't terrible but we just were a little flat and nobody is helped by that you know including him and so uh, we came out of halftime sharper on offense and sharper on defense made a couple shots that helped you know cut into the league quickly um but you know like i said i think it's more about how we play collectively and allowing you know, the individual performances to be a byproduct of that, him included. Mark, were you talking about your bench unit? I mean, just the versatility without Dub and without Shea for a handful of games and then coming in tonight and still 
putting in major contributions, like just whenever they could, just the bench unit in general. Yeah, those guys were really good tonight. I thought um, Kaysen down the stretch was huge defensively and gave us really good minutes to start the fourth. That was an important run, those first like five minutes of the fourth quarter, to, you know, keep the game where it was. Um, Wiggins, again, was outstanding. I thought Jay Will gave us great minutes on Sabonis. You know, he eats punches against that guy. I thought Chet, you know, we talk about Chet's growth, you know, but I thought tonight was a great uh, example of his growth, just looking at the trajectory of how he's guarded Sabonis over the course of the season. You know, that was a matchup the first time we played him in November or even earlier. I don't know when it was, but um, that was a tough matchup for him. And tonight he did a hell of a job on Sabonis. And so um, all those guys are you know, really, really good. Mark, aside, don't, not counting really the road trip and the, and the games you played without SGA in Santa Clara, you – uh, hadn't been playing as well the last five, six weeks as you did when you were really zooming. Was that more defensive, and uh, including tonight? But are you starting to see that you're coming out of that, or you, is that still a concern? Um, Post All Star break, you know, I think we've been a little bit worse offensively, you know, rating wise, maybe two points, and a little bit worse defensively, maybe one point, maybe even less. Um, and that's a 25 game sample after tonight, I think. Um, so a little bit of both ends. You know, I think the important point there is um, in an 82-game season, there's just like – there's parts of the year where you're thriving and you're in kind of a team rhythm, even when you're losing a couple games in that. And then there's times that you just have to, like, endure. You know, like you're just not in a rhythm or you take some injuries like the last week uh, or it's a tough schedule. It could be a, a number of factors and a combination of them. Uh, and you got to be a tough-minded team that can, like, play through – your dips, you know, and stay together through your dips and continue to forge an identity through your dips. Um, and, and that's what we've tried to do, you know. And so hopefully I do agree with you. You know, we weren't humming since off-star break the way we were, uh, you know, the end of December. But um, it's very hard to sustain that rhythm for 82 games. And, you know, you can grow from the dips, and that's what we want to do.